Hey, welcome back to American Truck Simulator. This is David Steele, and here's my truck. Or rather, here is today's uh, weapon of choice, I suppose one might say. This is a Freightliner FLB, and uh, it's running today a Detroit Diesel Series 60, a 14 litre, voiced by uh, Z Mods. And we're going to see if there's anything available at one of my favorite um, Dallas um, sites. Because right in the background, you've got the Dallas skyline. Okay, I'm going to stop that. All right, now I had tentatively selected a heavy bulldozer from Dallas to McAllister, or I guess that that's, that's how it's pronounced, McAllister. But what else do we have here? Anything else more interesting? Um, not really. They're all about the same. I've got a Texarkana trip. If we want to stick within Texas, uh, that's an urgent delivery. That might be a challenge um, for this load or this truck, but I'm up for a challenge. Lufkin, um, some much lighter cargo. I think we're going to go with the heavy bulldozer to Texarkana. Um, yeah, I think that that's, that that's what we want to do today. And why would, would that be a challenge? Well, I'm in a 550 horsepower Detroit diesel um, 14 litre, a Series 60 14 litre, which sounds great, but I'm in a, it's only got 1650 foot pounds of torque. And uh, torque's what you need for a cargo like, like this. So let's go ahead and uh, try and get the thing going. There we go, okay. I'm probably going to use the, this transmission mostly in automated mode today. Now I do have a secret weapon to explain. Yes, I've only got 1650 foot pounds of torque, but I do have a, a vocational um, ALL transmission. It's actually an eight speed ALL. That little bit of jargon. Uh, let's go ahead and get on the brakes here, I think. It means it's an eight speed with not one, not two, but three crawler gears. And the low, I think it's low, low one, the, the, the lowest crawler gear is exceptionally low. And that's what we really need. And that's what we're going to need. Uh, Alright, so I've got to get it, I've got to maneuver this around there. This is going to be a challenge. In the ideal world, I wouldn't be sharing this because I don't want to make a mess of it. But I'm probably going to make a mess, but hey, it's not one of my videos if I don't mess something up, right? Let's go ahead and see if what happens if we pull it through here. Uh -huh. Switch to the external view. Yeah, I've not really got the the maneuver but the length, I suppose. I've still got a bit of bit of leeway there. I need as much length as I can to, to try and point the, the back of the trailer towards um, the collection point. So let's give this a whirl. I should probably put that on and actually for good measure put my uh, beacon on as well. Got two beacons here today, one on the trailer, it's my own trailer, and one on um, the top of the uh, Freightliner. It's a six by four as you can see. And we've gone for older school wheels. Let's try and straighten this up a little bit, there we go. Hey, I might have done this. Well, it's a little early to start uh, speculating. See if we can get a, a, a top-down view of this. No, kind of. Um, there's a big construction crane there. It's just to the right, just off the picture as, as we look at this. Um, you can see it m maneuvering stuff around. And yeah, I, I, it's another reason why I like this this particular location. The other one is, of course, um, it's a challenge to get in and out of. But I mean, you've got to get that uh, 89,000 pound bulldozer there one way or the other, right? This thing, this, this thing has such a tight turning circle. Right, I think I might have lined it up more or less per... Maybe more or less perfectly. Okay, all right. I'm going to have to concentrate here. So the gearbox has a 355 final drive today. And um, I think it, it sort of highlights some of the compromises that, that a transmission maker or an owner-operator 
or um, hey, I'm in the spot. I'm close enough. Let's just switch to this view here, yeah. Maybe back that up just a little bit. I've no idea where the um, the how the ball does is going to be getting on here, but that's not my issue. Let's go ahead and uh, open the windows and turn it off, and uh, let's uh, let's let them load up. Let's check my, my time and so on. So it's 4.30 in the afternoon. I've got seven hours till my next rest. Okay. There we go. In 30 minutes, they magicked their bulldozer on. Let's go ahead and get this thing fired up. I think I'm going to need to um, make like a tree. Let's put my differential lock on. That's that. And um, the exit here is dead ahead. So um, we're going to attempt to to do this without um, like getting stuck. So I've got my locking differential on. I don't think I'll need that. It's not raining today, but it's going to avoid any excess wheel spin. Although it's getting dark. So the torque curve today is one of my own. It's taken directly from the Steel Productions engine pack, but um, we voiced it by Z mods as opposed to this Freightliner um, Cascadia default sound is what I use in the engine pack. Okay. Just gonna stick this thing nice and tight to the wall. Oh, that's real close. Yeah, I think I'm sliding. Okay, so we're gonna miss the wall here. How about the back? Is that gonna fit around the corner? It's close, but I think it's I think it's gonna go. Yes, okay. Alright, so those better transmission is not shifting up from low low one. Let's try and manually shift it. Yeah, it didn't like that. Okay. It's gonna let it climb it in low low one then. I suppose I could try and do it like that. Hey, almost did it. There we go. It's being more than a little brutal with uh, with the pedal, but uh, it, it did it. Okay, didn't like first. Uh, yeah, oh, I got a bit too ambitious there. I should have kept it in the crawler gears. All right, let's try this again. A hell start with a 89,000 pound bulldozer behind me. Okay, are we going to do it? Yes, we are. Don't buy a used Detroit Diesel Series 40 that's found its home in a vocational truck. Right, I'm feeling lucky. I'm going to try it in first. Yep, we did it. Okay. Didn't learn my lesson there, but um, didn't seem to matter as it happened. Oh yeah, and it's understeering. Look at that. Okay, let's put it back into automated mode and let's um, turn off the locking differential. I think it's just pushing me straight in, straight on. That's better. You need that little bit of wheel slippage to be able to, um, guess, turn around corners. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and get my beacons on. Like so. Check my headlights are on. Yes, they are. Now we have got uh, a long way to go and a short time to get there. Actually, we've got six hours, uh, and we're not hauling beer. So this isn't quite smoky on the band there. Plus I'm in an FLB as opposed to was it a it was a Kenworth. Convoy had one that had the Mac in it, as I recall. Right. Yeah, I really enjoy uh, collecting cargo from there. It's a challenge to get things up and down. And I think that this uh, eleven speed box or this eight speed plus three crawlers, it sort of highlights um like I say, one of the uh, the compromises that uh, the people have tried in terms of transmissions. I'm going to say that I stopped and just pull out in front of this this car. There we go. I think I have, oh, I just bumped up the curb, maybe a little bit right. Keep left. So why do I say that? Well, the reason being is um, that you have a, a, a dual 
for a dual H pattern. I'm going to negotiate this thing turning around. This could be a challenge. Do I really want to do this? Um, yeah, bounced up but off the curb. Not not good. Don't buy, don't buy uh, used wheels off a of Freightliner FLB that's been used for vocational stuff either. And uh, I think, yeah, I'm scra scraping the paintwork. Ugh. Well, it was nice and orange. But at least with this low gear, I can pull myself around. Okay. So I should have really taken um, the under the bridge route, but uh, we live and we learn. Someone's going to have to paint that, and I'm bouncing off the curb again. Is there any cleaner way of doing this? Oh, that's about as close as I can get. Right, straighten things up. Okay. Better attempt at this the second time. I've not changed the transmission to be high power mode, which might help us, but we'll we'll give that a second. We'll just see how well it, it performs right now. Really want to get my point across about this this transmission. So it's a H pattern and you've got higher and lower ranges. Great. So first to fourth and then fifth to eighth. Fifth mirrors first in terms of the position of the gear lever. Plus you've got those extra three crawler gears. Most of the time, you're only gonna use first through eighth. But when you do need the crawlers, you've, you've got them. Without the complexity of um, or cost and possibly weight of an 18 speed, would an 11 speed weigh that much less than an 18 speed? I don't actually know. Um, I could find that out. That booby um, series 60 uh, right underneath me. Okay, so Texan car are gonna be in the lane two. After this red car, we'll move out here. Yeah, there we go. You're gonna let me in, sunshine. Yep, yeah, that car let me in. Did you see that? It most definitely let me in. So you try and keep it easier for your drivers most of the time, and if you if you've got a manual fleet, of course this truck predates the uh, the the automated or the era of automated transmissions. We're getting pushed along here pretty pretty rapidly by the the cargo. Let's set cruise at fifty five. Okay. Let's work that engine. There we go. Now 55 is going to be about 1200 revs, just a little under. Which is where this Series 60 really wants to be. Yeah, but it, again, it's, yeah, it's going to shift down from time to time as the speed bleeds. Let's see if it can hold this hill at 50. Looks like it can. Okay. So you wanted to make things as easy as you could for your drivers. And some of that is, you know what, you've got an 8 speed with an extra three ratios for when you're holding something um, heavy up a hill. Time to take a sip of water. Okay. I've been playing around with the FLB a lot and the different, um, different options and specifications that you can go for. Um, vocational use you might think that the 4x2 is, is an ideal choice and in some ways it is it's extremely maneuverable um, I really enjoy that about about all of the cab over designs with a tight little turning circle the downside of the 4x2 or well, a couple of downsides and they're pretty major ones too there's merge left the first one is your cargo capacity is less because you have fewer axles so in Texas as I recall, it's 22,000 pounds for a dual axle, and I think it's 35 for a triple. Now, I'm not going to even attempt to explain, because I don't fully understand how those axle weights work, but the long and short are, you can put more weight onto a 6x4. You can legally put more weight onto a 6x4. You've also got a bit more traction, you've got a bit more drag. Uh, you've got a bit, bit more friction, but you've got more traction. In theory, you've got more traction, although sometimes you don't. It's all about the pressure on the on the tarmac from the from the tires. Now, with a double, maybe you could haul um, more weight, 
but you've got a, a weight limit, so I'm guessing that's going to be, um, you know, thirteen thousand pounds less. But I think Texas still says the weight limit is eighty thousand um, pounds gross vehicle, and beyond that, you need a permit. And they may have exemptions for emissions equipment and other bit, bits and pieces, um, but don't my speed down to sixty. I think I don't want to be throwing too much diesel out the back. Get off the off the rumble strip. So assuming you can still haul 80,000 pounds and you can stick within your axle limits, then yes, maybe a double or even a triple trailer might work. But the other reason why the 4x2 is not always a good choice is stability. Cabovers have a reputation for being uncomfortable, I mean bouncy, noisy, because the engine's pretty much underneath you or next to you, depending on the model. And the 4x2s, there's, they have to be fairly stiffly sprung um, because there's fewer axles holding the upright. And that means um, they can be very bouncy. Like original Mini Cooper bouncy. Not, not, the Mini, not the BMW Mini, but the 1960s, 1970s vintage Mini Coopers. You really feel like you want to avoid cat's eyes or spare change that's fallen on, on the street because they're very rough and if you were to be going out on a date um, and you, there was a young lady or a lady in general wearing an outfit that is potentially how do I say this you, you, you may not necessarily be as you may need to be strapped down strapped in whatever the term is the long and short are they're a little rough and um, they're a little unstable, so on a wet, bouncy road, you're, it's a recipe for understeer and then a jackknife. No, that's never fun. 6x4s are a little more comfortable, rattling away on my controller right underneath the microphone. They're a little more comfortable, um, they're a lot more stable, and they uh, have better brakes because you've got one more tire, one more axle, four more tires, um, giving you braking effort. So far, this machine is really handling the weight aplomb. I mean, okay, it's losing speed going up a hill, but we're going to be early. Did not expect that. Let's knock my speed down to 55 and let's save a bit of fuel. Get off the rumble strip, David. So it's showing as averaging 5.3, but I know um, that. Uh, we didn't start with a full tank, I didn't reset the trick computer. So, all up, um, not that much to really talk about in terms of how well this, this, this combination is coping with it. And the gearing is not excessively tall, that we're able to cruise at a reasonable speed in top gear. Let's give this cop a bit more note, a bit more room. Let's move back in. There we go. Pretty cool effect to have those beacons going. I don't think you'd really be doing the oversized load into darkness. Um, I think that there's probably reasons why you shouldn't do that, like someone's going to run into you. But um, it let me do it, so I'm going to do it. Love that rumble strip. I need to get off it. Okay. This is the uh, Series 60 that Zmod's put into the Steam Workshop. It's free, um, and if you know the, the, the definition file for it, you can uh, happily convert it or add it to your own engine packs. I'm going to dip my headlights. So it's nice to be back in the FLB after quite a bit of time in the International 9400. I, and that's not to say I'll not be going back to that truck. Depending when I publish this video, um, there'll be other international video is sort of in the way but yeah there's been a lot of fun um, enjoying the older trucks and so much so that I think Red Thunder's getting a little jealous sitting in the in the garage or garage so I'm trying to sound all American now it, not really doing much well there's a fix for that 
Yeah, see, so it just, just catches on 7 for just a little bit and then goes back into top. I'm surprised at how well this um, this engine transmission is working. I thought it might be a little tall for it, especially with an 89,000 pound heavy bulldozer chucked on the back. It's a lot of mass. I guess we haven't come up to any serious hills, so there is that. Um, and yes, the hardest challenge was getting out of, of the site, which, um, but thankfully that uh, extra, extra, extra low crawler gear was just up to the task. We weren't going up the hill very quickly, but we didn't need to be. We just had to get up the hill. And I think we're pretty much coming up to test. I kind of go ahead and disable my cruise. Right. Yep. Then exit right. Tell the world we're going to exit here. Let's get on the engine brake because this guy has slowed down in massively. Oh, come on. Really, Bushnell Farms? That was a little excessive, I thought. So you might think that uh, you wouldn't want to haul a particularly heavy cargo with only uh, 8, 10, 11 gears, or 9, I suppose. Well, actually, um, this isn't the most powerful Detroit Diesel Series 60 um, engine by quite a long shot. There are plenty of engines with more torque available. Um, there's even an 1850 foot pound torque, in fact there are two, in the Series 60 family. Plus this engine, this truck also came with the, uh, the 3406E. And there's a 435 horsepower with 1650 foot pounds of torque. If you want more power, you've got to up to a 1750 or 1850 torque engine. So you just, you'd have to use a different gearbox. Let's get on my engine brake. Go straight. Yeah, I gotta get on my service brakes now. I'm trying to help it by downshifting, and it's not, it's not liking it. Keep left. Hey, look at that. That timing was perfect. Turn left. Gotta love that real tight turning circle. And it's even short shifting it because I'm being very gentle with the power. Oh, I'd say that that would be a bit of a success, really. Look at that, you beauty. You can definitely tell there's a bit of weight on the bike when you come to brake. So I think other features on the truck. Oh, and we're off again. I'm using a Smarties wheel pack that's available on the workshop. I'm it might be Jasper. Oh, music. I have both Jaspers and Smarties wheel pack installed, but Smarties has the uh, the twenty inch rims, which is what we uh, what I think I opted for today. Now I'm saying that the rims don't seem particularly small. Great big fat profile tires, and I am led to believe that the the smaller rims and the bigger tires give you a more flexible ride and for vocational duties in other words plowing or plugging along in mud you might want to drop the tire pressure give you a bit more surface area and that can help you in an off-road type circumstance i also like the look of the of the rims they are available in a 22 and a half inch and i think a 24 and a half inch as well in fact there are lots of different lots and lots of wheels available along with lots of different tires taking this really wide I think we may have mown the lawn, but I didn't see it in the mirror, so you didn't see either. Result. I am not going to be doing the difficult parking uh, in this. It's 10 o'clock at night in the game. I'm going to suppose my driver just wants to go to a bar and have some tequila. Or um, just re retire. Probably wouldn't have tequila, to be fair. I think it's a Friday evening. Let's check. It's Thursday night, and I guess you're going to stop. Thank you. Okay, so he's got one more day left in his week. Um, right. And, yep, and there we go. Um, he need, his shift is over by, I think, midnight tonight. So, yep, we're finally here. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, check in um, with, uh, with the desk here. And um, I think I'm going to call it for this this video so thanks ever so much for watching hope you enjoyed it that was a bit of uh, heavy duty um 
hauling in an FLB that's configured more or less for vocational duties. Thanks so much for watching everyone, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.